Hi, my name is Chipo. I wanted to talk to you about um, how to handle divorce in the time of quarantining. I know that when I was going through divorce, um, first and foremost, I just want to tell you that I'm, I'm sorry that you're going through this, this, this process. It's a very traumatic, painful experience. And um, whether you found out that your uh, spouse is said that they don't love you anymore and they don't want to be with you anymore, um, or maybe they they found somebody else and they want to be with that person and you just found out or maybe it's even your best friend um, um, you could be maybe in a, an abusive situation emotionally mentally physically and you're tired and you want to get out so wherever you add in whatever your circumstances are, are I know that divorce is equally traumatic it's it's painful um, um, there's a spiritual aspect of it and there's also a physical and emotional aspect of it. So um, I just want to share with you just a, a scripture from the Bible first, um, why it hurts us in the spiritual, whether you believe in God or not. But I just want you to hear that this, the reason why it's so painful and, and, and how it affects us spiritually. So I wanted to read something here. It's a scripture in Matthew. Um, Matthew 19, uh, it talks about divorce. It says that um, some Pharisees came to, to, to Jesus to test him. They asked, is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife for any and every reason? Haven't you heard, he replied, that at the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said for this reason a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two will become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So right then and there, it, it's like the best way that I can put it is that um, God created a covenant. He brought a man and a woman together. He united us as one. So basically, uh, the, the best analogy I can think about is, is like a grilled cheese sandwich. When you, when you, when you cook a grilled cheese sandwich, the two separate pieces of bread that you have, you put the cheese together, and, and once you put the cheese together, it's like the Holy Spirit is in the middle. When you put the cheese together and you cook it, that that becomes one. And the thing is, is that um, you can't, when you try to separate, you can't separate the grilled cheese sandwich once it's cooked, but when you try to separate it, what happens? It's like, it shatters everywhere. It doesn't separate perfectly, as perfectly as the two, pieces of bread came together, it's not going to come, come apart that way. So basically, when, 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 we, when we go through divorce, you're trying to, just like the grilled cheese sandwich, you're trying to separate the two that were one, and they shatter everywhere. And that's why we, we feel the emotional trauma. We feel the emotional pain because our heart is shattered in, shattered in so many different pieces. So the spiritual aspect of divorce is that when you separate the two, when you separate the one into two, this is what happens. And that's why we go through uh, 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 numbness. We go through uh, bitterness. We go through betrayal. We go through so many different emotions, rage. Depending on if, if you were betrayed, then you're going to go through uh, bitterness. You're going to go through anger. You're going to go through, or, or, or if you feel like, you know, you, you your husband doesn't love you, your wife doesn't love you anymore, you're going to go through all those different levels of pain because it's part of the process. So that's the spiritual aspect of it. And then the emotional, uh, physical aspect of it is, is, is you have friends and family members, people that you, you knew for years, people that you spend time together with. You went to his family's house, they went to your family's house, and now all of a sudden, his family does not want to be around, they don't want to be around you anymore. They pick sides, they want to be with him because that's their family member. Or maybe you have friends, you had mutual friends, and the friends don't want to be around you anymore. And and so not only are you going through a personal trauma of the breakup, you're also going through the trauma of, of people separating from you, isolation. So um, that's why it really, really hurts. And not only that, then you have to think about, you're thinking about uh, where you're going to stay. If, if financially you can't afford it, let's say you're a stay-at-home mom, then what's going to happen? How are you going to how are you going to be able to afford to be on your own? Are you going to make it on your own? Those are the kind of emotions that I went through. 
is 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 i want to keep my house how am i going to keep my house i'm not paying i'm not making enough money how is this going to happen of course you know god god worked it out i i i ended up i own my house now and and it's just it's just it was a very difficult uh 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 journey but but the place where i'm at now is the healthiest that i've been in my life so there is hope and i want to tell you that um I wrote out like five different, six different things that, that helped me and the things that were not helpful, the things that I could have done differently. So I want to just uh, go over those things. Um, the first one is prayer. Um, I call it talking to God. Uh, there was one night on the couch, whether you believe in God or not, I just want to tell you that Jesus loves you and that um, he has a plan for your life. Don't give up on your life. I also want to tell you that when you talk to him, God listens. Even when you think he's not listening, he listens. Um, there was one one day on the couch when I was so distraught over my divorce. I, I used to sleep on the couch. And my husband used to sleep in the bedroom. I was so distraught that, that I just I just I just despaired. I despaired even of life, and I, I didn't know if I was gonna make it. And and you know it was just so devastating. And the shame of divorce and the guilt of divorce. And the disappointment of it all, of losing everything, the dreams, when you walk down the aisle, you know, you have dreams to build a life with that person and, and, and how you're going to live and your kids. And now all of a sudden, everything is, 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 is destroyed. So I was going through that and, and I just remember just, just giving up, just losing hope. And I felt like I couldn't go on anymore. And then uh, I, I literally felt, felt God just tell me that nothing is worth me losing my life nothing he just showed me how important i was to him and how much he loved me and um that gave me so much hope like even though the circumstances as far as my my ex-husband and i breaking up were still happening but it gave me hope in the fact that i was gonna make it that i needed to continue and plus i have a child i have a beautiful son and i uh, uh um, god wants me to be there for him so um, um, he gave me hope in the fact that he showed me how much he loved me, that despite the fact that my husband didn't love me anymore, that, that he loves me and that he has a plan for my life. So talking to God really got me out of that, that hopelessness, out of that, that place of, 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 of despairing, you know? Uh, so, so more than anything, I just want to stress, let it out, talk to him. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is, um, depending on the situation that you're going through. I went on the internet. I read a lot about divorce. I read, um, it was Christmas time. So I couldn't, I couldn't, all the lawyer's offices were closed. Um, all the resources that I, that I was trying to find were closed. I couldn't find any, any help. Um, they, they say, talk, talk to a mediator if you don't have a lot of money. So, um, everything basically that I needed, uh, uh, that I needed to get help in that time, I couldn't get because it was the holidays. So um, what what I found helpful was um, um, reading. I started reading, of course I started reading my Bible, anything pertaining to divorce that would encourage me in the Bible or anything that, uh, I would, sometimes I'd just open up, 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 open up the Bible and it's exactly what I needed to hear. So that was helpful. And I also went on the internet and I started reading different articles. Let's say, for example, uh, you're in a situation where you found out that your, your husband wants to be with somebody else and your husband has been cheating on you, uh, as an example. Um, you can go on the internet and, and read different articles on that. That's going to encourage you because when you're going through um, uh, a divorce, your, your emotions take over. So sometimes we don't think rationally. Should I confront the person? Let's say you find out who it is. Should I confront the person? Uh, uh, you just feel like you're going to go crazy and you're going to lose it. And, and sometimes you feel like confronting is going to help you to, 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 to get out the pain. It's going to help you to relieve the anger. So you find different articles that tell you it's not wise to do that. Uh, um, as a woman, you know, respect yourself. In a sense that uh, I read an article that was really good. It was saying that if you confront someone, especially uh, when when people are cheating on you, they really bring this themselves to a level that's that's not a good level. So you don't want to you don't want to get to any, to that level, right? You want to maintain your your self respect, even though you're hurting. You want to respond in a healthy manner so that in the long run, it's going to help you to heal. 
So I read a lot of different articles on that that really just really helped me uh, to get through uh, the time that I was going through, the questions that I was asking, even lawyers like, like uh, in your state, the laws in your state, what do the laws in your state say about divorce, about, about property, property uh, divisions, all kind of things. So I went on the internet and did that. That really helps me. Um, another thing is uh, the thing that I didn't do that I, that I could have done differently is, is, is uh, to, to exercise. Um, I know some friends have shared how they couldn't even get out of bed when they're, when they're going through a divorce. And imagine if you have kids, kids still need to eat, and they're also going through their own uh, trauma because the mom and dad are breaking up. So you want to get out of bed. You don't want to stay in bed. You, uh, For example, for me, uh, um, I, I was not taking care of myself. I was not eating right. Uh, just I just really did not take care of my body. So... I ended up getting a viral infection and I had a viral infection for two months. I lived off of orange juice and, 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 and uh, soup. I didn't eat anything else but orange juice and soup. Um, unfortunately, I ended up, I just started feeling dizzy. And then I went to the doctor. That's like three months later, I went to the doctor. Um, my A1C, I found out that I was one number from being diabetic. So eating, drinking all that sugar, I gained like 40 pounds throughout, throughout the year. I gained like 40 pounds, which I've lost. Thank God. But um, so if I could have done it differently, of course, you can't go to the gym, but take walks. Go outside and take walks. Uh, I, my son and I usually, we go out and we walk, we run, we walk, we run. That's really helpful because it, it helps your heart rate. It helps strengthen your heart. Not only that, it helps you to release stress. And also, it's a good talking time for my son and I. That way, he shares what he's going through. It's just our time alone um, in the neighborhood. We walk and we run. If you have little kids, just take a stroll and just, just walk with them. Um, it's just a really great way in, during quarantine to, to help you release the stress that you're going through. Um, thirdly, um, actually fourth, eating healthy. Eating healthy um, goes along, of course, with exercise. If I ate healthy... Uh, meaning that when you get up, you know, take care of yourself, eat a balanced meal, eat, eat a lot of vegetables, a lot of uh, salads. Sometimes we have a tendency to like just go to like Starbucks and, and, and have a lot of uh, drinks that have a lot of sugar and uh, uh, scones and, you know, the things that, 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 that all the carbs basically that, that are comforting foods. I'm not, I'm not against carbs. I love carbs. I love pizza. I love uh, our scones I love but eating them in a balanced way meaning that if I have a scone I'm gonna eat a lot of fruit that day I'm gonna eat a lot of vegetables that day I'm gonna have a maybe a a, 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 a meal with with salmon maybe sweet potatoes and a bunch of salad so more than anything as hard as it is I want to encourage you to hear, eat healthy take care of yourself because that's gonna help you fight because uh, your body needs need strength to fight what you're going through. So eating right and exercising is so important when you're going through a divorce. Um, uh, next, next one, uh, writing in the journal. I just highly encourage you to write. Writing is another way to help you just get rid of whatever you're going through in your, in, in your heart. Uh, you might not be able to express it the way that you normally would because you're going through so many different emotions. But when you write, you'll be surprised uh, just what comes out of you when you're writing. It's a good thing though, because you don't want to keep uh, anything inside that that's going to eat you up. That's going to prolong your, your healing process. So start writing whatever you feel. If, if, if you in cross cross quarters with your, with your, with your soon to be ex, go in the garage or something or go outside and just start writing. That's just going to give you that alone time, that quiet time, even though you're in the same home, it's going to give you that time to just really, uh, uh, focus on you and, and, and so that you can help yourself as well as your mental and physical health. Um, next is uh, talking to friends. Uh, I have a lot of friends who are amazing. My friends were just every, anything that I needed, my friends were there. So I really, really uh, loved the fact that um, I have friends who, who, who supported me throughout the process. Most of my friends have never been through divorce I kind of felt like uh, they they didn't really know what I was going through some did but the majority didn't so 
but the thing is that they were there to talk. If I needed somebody to talk to, if I needed somebody to listen. Uh, so your friends might not understand what you're going through, but at the same time that your friends, they love you. Uh, just open your heart to them. Don't keep it to yourself. Don't don't say, you know, I'm too ashamed. I don't want to tell anybody. Eventually, they're going to find out anyway. Eventually, people are going to find out anyway. So talk to your friends. Talk to somebody who you trust. That way, you could just tell them what you need. If you need, to, if you just need somebody to listen to, just say, "Hey, I just need somebody who you know to listen to to let this thing out." So um, that's really, really important. Last but not least, sleep. Um, the things that I mentioned: prayer, talking to God, reading your Bible, reading articles online, writing your journal. All these things tie into getting sleep. If you if you're taking care of your body and if you're eating right. You, you will get sleep. It was hard for me because of what, what I was going through and uh, and the emotional battle that I was going through with my ex-husband. It was hard to sleep because we just, 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 it was just really bad. Um, so I really highly encourage you to take care of yourself and to go for walks and to go for runs. Uh, so that way, when it's time to go to bed, you're able to get it, go to bed and think straight. Um, lastly, I just want to tell you that I know that you're going through a really, really difficult time right now, but I I went through divorce uh, 2016, 2017. My divorce was finalized in 2018. Uh, it was a process. It wasn't a difficult, it wasn't an easy process, but I just want to tell you, you will get through it. Just give yourself time. Give yourself time. You will heal. You will get better. You will get to the other side. Um, just don't, don't turn to anything that's self-destructive. Don't don't go go buying alcohol. Don't don't get high. Don't do things that are eventually gonna prolong your healing process. Take care of your body and take care of yourself. If you need more information, I, I've shared on YouTube uh, 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 my my whole divorce journey. So feel free to go on my YouTube and uh, just listen to my story. Thank you for listening. My name is Chipo Sowards, and uh, be encouraged and. Uh, it's going to get better. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Thank you for watching. Bye.